532. So I guess we can get started and we'll start with um, public comment. So Beth, right now you're the only one that has your hand raised, so we can start with you. Hi everyone. For the record, my name is Shabnam Beth Nolan and I'm a Montpelier resident with three kids, two of them in the school system and one coming up. So I just wanted uh, to sort of take the opportunity to reset ourselves in the charge of the committee. As I noticed on the agenda, some of the questions later down are, you know, what it's talking about sort of defining safety and thinking about it moving forward. And so I just wanted to ask of everybody on the committee that as you think through those questions that you uh, consider ensuring that the framework in which you're answering those questions it, questions is rooted within the charge and looking at whether or not having an SRO and defining safety, whatever that definition may be, fits within our equity policies as a school district. So just wanted to take a second. It's been a while since we've gotten together and wanted to just bring that up really quickly so that if people needed to take a look back at the charge and see what that equity policy was to make sure that as they're answering and discussing those questions, they're comparing it not just generally to what you may think as an individual or you may think generally about what's good and bad about SROs, but how does it compare and, and go under the light of uh, the equity policy? So that was all. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I see we have a couple other members of the public, and I just want to make sure that we um, honor the fact that you're here. And if you have anything that you'd like to say during this time, this is the time carved out for public comment. I'm just here to witness. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, um, so we can move to the consent agenda. I do just quickly wanna say that Sue and Keisha are here and they are going to be facilitating tonight's meeting um, primarily. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to them a little bit later after the consent agenda. So on the consent agenda, we just have um, approving the meeting minutes from December 17th. Do I have a motion? I'll move to approve them. I'll second. Thank you. All right. Um, Will? Oh, sorry. Is there any discussion? Does it, does anyone have discussion on the minutes or any changes to make? Okay. Nope. All right. Um, so I'll take a vote. Will? Aye. Amanda? Aye. Edie? Aye. Eliana? Aye. Joan? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Mia? Aye. Susan? Aye. And Zach? Oh, I can't hear you, Zach, if you're speaking. And I also see that Jay you're there too, but you didn't put the asterisk next to your name. Hi, <laughs> uh, sorry. But, uh, Jay, yes. Okay. For Great. Okay, so the first item on the agenda is to set the context for this meeting. Um, and I think we're going to start with Keisha. Thanks, Emma. Um, <clears throat> I've been trying to think of how to frame this in a way that doesn't feel uh, overly partisan or leading in any way, but it really felt as though we could not start this meeting uh, in the moment that we're in without acknowledging the very real feelings of danger um, and a lack of safety that many people feel in the country, including in Vermont. Um, <clears throat> I won't go too deeply into what we saw on Wednesday um, but we are also looking at safety threats that may take place on January 17th or 20th. 
um, here in Vermont and in your capital city um, may take place on another day altogether, but there are a lot of reasons that people are feeling really concerned and that we're trying to explain to our young people um, how we failed them in many ways as a country and as a uh, civil nation and as a democracy. Um, we don't really have the luxury in many ways of changing our agenda, which sometimes feels like that kind of inhumane white supremacy culture that work still must happen and we have to sort of keep moving forward in some productive way. So we wanted to really just acknowledge what's going on and also make sure people felt full permission um, and license to bring up, you know, however they're feeling in the context of the questions tonight, because I think as we talk about what safety looks like in our community, um, it's really hard to separate that from how we're all feeling right now, knowing that our kids and our community and our how our school schedule is going to go are affected by very real threats of danger right now. So I hope you know, I don't, I don't know. It's hard not to offend people right now in the world on some side or another, but I just think it would be um, impossible for us not to, to address that as we start. So I wanted to say that. Thank you, Keisha. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think it goes without saying that anytime if anyone's sort of feeling overwhelmed by this process um, or the conversation that, you know, feel free to step aside or if there's something that you really want to say in light of current events, then always feel free to voice those things as well. Um, so I was going to start with the um, reviewing the committee charge and the role and the timeline. Um, I received a few questions over the break about um, mostly the timeline of, of how things were going to go from here on out. And I wanted to sort of clarify some of those things and then also make sure that um, if you had questions that uh, I answer those or attempt to answer them. I'm going to just put in the chat um, the language of the charge that sort of states the two parts of our charge if you can see that. So the, it's not, I should have, um, it, it was it had bullet points and now it doesn't. But um, the first part of the charge is to make a recommendation to the board on how to proceed with the student resource officer, um, school, school resource officer position by December 2020, which we got an extension on. And then the second part of the charge is to pro provide a broader report on safety through the lens of our district diversity, equity and inclusion policy by March. Um, so this first part, I mean, what we talked about it at the last meeting that it doesn't have to um, look like a recommendation. And what Sue and Keisha and I have been working on um, for this agenda and what we discussed at the last meeting was sort of how do we, what do we present to the board and what, what does that sort of product end up looking like? Um, I did talk to Jim Murphy, um, board chair, and he's gonna give me five minutes <laughs> at the next agenda, um, the next meeting, which is January 20th, just to give um, an overview to the board members of sort of what to expect from us, from this committee for the February 3rd meeting. And on the February 3rd meeting, we're going to have a you know, substantial part of the agenda um, to present whatever we decide to present to the board as a committee and then the board will have time for discussion and ultimately um, make a decision, I believe, that night. That's the intent. Um, so, so what um, Sue and Keisha and I sort of discussed was um, that this doesn't, and, and it's been mentioned at the other committee, mem uh, committee meetings, is that it doesn't really have to look like a recommendation. It doesn't have to be this committee recommends X about the SRO. This is what we want you to do. And what we've decided is to go more in a direction of sort of summarizing our findings, um, summarizing our key takeaways and providing them with all of the various work that we've done up to this point. Um, and I believe that all of those items, the, the Q&A document, the stakeholder feedback survey results, um, 
you know, the key takeaways and the themes and all the stuff that we produced as a committee, I feel like those things are going to go a long way to help the individual board members um, with their task of having to land on a yes or no vote around the SRO. So there's certainly some movement in that plan, um, uh, you know, room, room for change in that plan. And at the end of this agenda, we have um, reflection and next steps and input on our next agenda. So as the meeting unfolds and as you start to sort of see these products that we're gonna be working on for the board, um, you might keep in mind other things that we might wanna spend our next meeting doing. So is it um, January 26th? So, so we will have one more meeting before we actually present to the board. And, um, and you can have a role tonight in setting the agenda for that meeting. So if there's something you feel that we're missing or um, you know, a strategy that you would like to present to the committee tonight about how we should potentially present to the board, um, we're gonna be all ears on that. So is there any questions? Have I answered people's questions around the timeline, um, our role in this process, the charge, the point, the point where we're at right now. If you have any questions, just raise your hand or speak up. Sometimes if you just stay quiet a little longer, a question emerges. Good teaching trick. <laughs> Emma, I did have a question about the presentation to the board um, on the February 3rd. Were yep. you envisioning that as like a collaborative effort or like a few people or, or would you do it as you, the chairs of the committee do it or do you have any? I definitely don't think, um, well, I would not want to be, I would not be interested in being the sole presenter at that meeting. I think it certainly, you know, this has been such a collaborative effort and we've all put in so much time and energy that I would love to have um, people help present our findings to the board. Um, I think some people will be more interested in participating in that aspect than others. And, I, and I'm not gonna like put anyone on the spot and force people to present to the board, but absolutely if, um, and that's something that I have in, in sort of my notes for later in the agenda tonight. Um, and it's something that we could decide at the next meeting. You know, you could have two weeks to sort of consider what do I want my role to be? What would I like to work on, you know? Um, I mean, I do think we need to be relatively organized and succinct in our presentation, but I think they'll give us time. You know, I'm not exactly sure. We haven't worked out that agenda yet, so I'm not exactly sure how much time, but in my mind, I'm envisioning <laughs> 20 minutes, half hour, I'm hoping for. Um, so we'll see. And then, and then I'm, I'm also thinking that board members will probably have questions for us as a committee. Um, and, and I'm hoping to provide them with a lot of the documents that we have up to this point, at least the raw stuff for them to be able to sort through between now and, and even January 20th or February 3rd, because there's a lot of there's a lot in there and there's a lot to read through and I would like to give them enough time to, um, you know, honor all of that. Any other questions? Edie emailed me ahead of time and let me know that her voice is hurting tonight, so. She's going to give her vocal cords a little rest. Um, but if you have any questions, you can also put them in the chat. Okay. I think that um, like at the presentation, maybe each of our, not stakeholder groups, but like faculty, students, like administration, there it should be like a good like variety of people who are presenting. So there's, they get some good perspectives going. Yeah. Thank you. That's a great point, Eliana. And also Eliana, Eliana and I met and we talked about maybe 
doing one of our famous committee surveys to see, to sort of gauge your level of interest in being a presenter. So maybe we could do that um, between this meeting and next meeting, and then at the next meeting sort of share the results of that. And if all 15 of us um, are interested in presenting, or if only five of us are interested in presenting, um, you know, we might, that might be a good starting point, but that was something that um, Elia, Eliana and I floated at our last meeting. I also want to apologize that um, the students had a meeting planned for the 8th, I believe it was last Friday, and I was just spacing, I wasn't able to attend and I was sort of spacing on the, the whole like Zoom aspect of it that I had to be there to start the Zoom link. So some of you may have arrived to an empty Zoom meeting and I apologize for that. We have it rescheduled for this coming Friday. Um, and there have been a few questions um, that I've, you know, email exchanges that I've had with some of you about different um, people to potentially present to this committee. And I'm sort of grappling with like, when do we have those people present? And in some ways I feel like those, a lot of those presentations, like the one idea was um, there's a woman who specializes in trauma-informed practices that really wants to present to us and then another idea was floated about Matt Nisley, who was the former SRO, potentially presenting to us. And I'm just not sure when the appropriate time is to bring those people in. And if there's an urgency and it makes sense to have some of those people come to our next meeting on the 26th, or if we should hold off and incorporate their um, presentations for the second part of our charge. So that's something you can be thinking about now and then we can dig into a little bit at the end of this meeting. Okay, so I think the next part of the agenda is for Sue and Keisha, right? Or am I yep. continuing? I think we're ready to, to continue on. Thank you, Emma. Hi, everyone. Well, first, I just want to acknowledge uh, this will be uh, Keisha and I, our last time kind of formally with you all. And we are really just so impressed with the work of this group. I mean, you all have done a lot of work. and. Uh, as Emma mentioned, we think this work is going to really be able to serve not just the school district, but the city. We think you've learned some things that are going to be very useful. So I hope you all feel really good about what you've done so far. And tonight, our hope is to try to help you uh, take some of this work and create some things with it that will be useful both to your committee as you move forward into the second part of your charge and also to the board for their more short-term decision-making. So I'm just gonna take a minute and share the screen. Sometimes it helps to just have a visual look at uh, where, where you are and where you're going. And Emma already kind of talked about your charge. We, we just acknowledged that the, you know, it was extended a little. So tonight we're, we're hopefully going to help you work with some of the feedback you've received to share some recommendations with around the SRO position. I'll speak more about that in a minute. And then what Keisha and I feel really excited about is this bigger picture charge around developing a broader vision um, for school justice safety and the future of the relationship uh, between the district and the police department. And so we hope that what we do tonight and what you present to the board will really position you to continue on with that work. And um, let's see if I can. And so, you know, just as a reminder, you've all done a lot of work gathering input from stakeholders through surveys and conversations. Uh, through that work early on, you started to identify a shared vision and a shared set of concerns related to safety across stakeholder groups. And then you all did a lot of learning. You had a presentation from Libby. You've had a lot of conversations. We shared some articles and things like that. And so we just, again, want to acknowledge all the work that's happened and we're really going to try to build on that work tonight. And for tonight's meeting, what we want to do is give you a chance to review some of the key themes from the work of the committee. And that's going to happen throughout the meeting in different places. We also have structured this meeting to give you an opportunity to really come up with a set of core values related to safety and again, using some of what you heard around people's vision and concerns. We hope that you can use that to identify some values that you think should 
be the foundation for the work going forward. And then the third thing we want to do is give you an opportunity to create some recommendations. And as Emma said, we thought it would be more helpful and more appropriate given where you are with your work to share, really do this in the form of sharing with the board what you've really been hearing from people. And so with all of your best thinking, all the stakeholder feedback you've heard, being aware of the diversity and equity policy for the district, your conversations with each other, uh, what is your best thinking around uh, benefits of keeping the SRO position? What is your best thinking around benefits to eliminating that position? And then what are some other key considerations that you would like the board to keep in mind as they move forward? And so that's how we've framed that piece of the work. I think I'll just pause there and see if there's any question about what we're gonna be doing tonight. So I'm going to keep going then. And we want to just go over with you the key elements of the vision. We, um, I took this from, you'll see that Mia and Catherine and Will got together and they created a document that um, contains themes from all of this work you did. We thought it was really important to theme some of this work because there's so much data that you collected. And we wanted to make it usable. So I just wanna take a minute and share some of the key elements of the vision and the concerns. And we're going to be asking you to work with this in a little activity that we have coming up. So here's some of the key elements that uh, you all seem to hear from across stakeholder groups for the vision. So one part is that the district is a friendly, inclusive place where students, staff, and families experience a sense of community and belonging. There are trusting relationships and good communication between adults and students, and staff offer both academic and emotional support for students. There's training and professional development around a lot of different areas, including de-escalation, restorative practices, equity, implicit bias, systemic racism, uh, mental health and competency, that schools invest in social workers to support mental health, and that there are clear expectations related to safety, safety and there's personal responsibility and ownership for meeting those. So those were some elements of the vision, what, what stakeholders would like to see going forward. And then we also asked people, what are some of your key concerns around safety? So one was this idea of lack of training and trauma-informed care for police and also staff, and especially as it relates to interactions with people from marginalized groups and students. A lack of transparency is a concern, bullying, mental health issues, fear and anxiety around the threat of danger, and the presence of weapons uh, on campus, whether in the hands of police or others. So with that, I'm going to just stop sharing the screen for a moment and see if anybody has any response to that or, uh, questions about that before we move on to our activity. Okay, so I'm gonna share the screen again for a moment. Okay. So the idea of using values, a lot of our work we do with communities and organizations, we really hone in on this idea of making sure that people have uh, an, a really good idea of what core values are. And they can be like a North Star or a compass. They can help us keep us headed in a right direction. So for example, as the community goes forward and maybe starts making some specific recommendations, we hope that you'll be able to return to these and say, how do these recommendations align with these values? The things that we've said are most important when it comes to safety. So the first thing that I'd like you to do is keeping in mind the vision and the concerns that we just talked through. I just want you each to take a minute. And if you have a piece of paper and a pencil or something, that would be great, or you can do it electronically. But I just wanna encourage you to write down three to five words that you think represent 
the core values, the things that matter the most to this community when it comes to safety at the, at, uh, the school district. So does anybody need more time? Okay. What I'd like to do is just invite um, Emma, because I think she has the ability to do this, to just create some breakout groups, uh, maybe pairs of two or three, Emma. And I'd like to invite you to share your core values with each other and um, let me just share the screen again for a moment. First of all, give you a chance to say hi. Like Keisha said, there's a lot happening. So please feel free to take a moment to check in. And then we'd like to invite you to share your values with each other and talk through them and choose a couple of words or phrases that are most important to your group. And then we're going to ask you to share your words with the full group. And we'll do um, about, we can do 15 minutes for this. Or actually, if we do pairs or threes, maybe we could try to, well, let's stay with 15 minutes. We don't want to rush this. And um, Emma, do you need any help with the breakouts? You can, if you want help, I can, if you make me the host, I can. Um. I've got it. So how many minutes do you want them in the breakout room or us in the breakout rooms? Uh, let's do 15 minutes and let's do groups of three to four. Oh, three to four. Out of two to three, I think. Oh. And 15 minutes, I think, will be the right amount of time. I'm just going to need to recreate. Um, okay. Uh, give me just a second. Oh, okay, I see. I don't end up automatically in a room, but I can go to a room. Um, okay, and then, so should I do 14 minutes with the 60 second notice? Yes, please. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay. 
Hi. Hi. It looks like we're with Orcamedia. <laughs> yeah. Here comes kind of, Emma. There's Emma too. Hi. Hello. <sighs> Should we just start by reading what we wrote down? Or hi. Or we're hi. supposed to be. <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe like a little check in since we have 15 whole minutes. That's a long time. <laughs> I know. We're not used to having a long time. Yeah. How have you been, Catherine? I haven't seen you in, in person in forever. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. We had a good, you know, holiday break and then all the craziness happened. So we're right. I feel like I'm right back. Like in, uh, just bizarro world um but how are your kids doing they're doing i mean i don't know they're pretty good but you know taylor's had a tough time he's gonna go back to in person next semester which i think will be good so he was virtual. virtual and it was just really tough and uh, in the whole pandemic period has been a lot tougher on her on him than we realized it's so, so hard to be like that's such an important developmental time of life and like really your like social world is 90 percent of your interest and like where you're getting your growth and you know you're disconnected these days yeah so we've definitely like uh benefited from some of the social emotional uh, help of the school. So I will definitely plug the high school for their support and all of this. And I mean, in VTVLC, you know, the teachers there were great too. It's just like it's a perfect storm for just Online being. learning is like a whole different <laughs> thing where like some kids, you know, are fine with it and it makes sense to them and they just sort of like chug through the online classes and then other kids just don't have that like human connection with a teacher and it and it doesn't work for them he's like i will never take an online class again in my life so yeah but anyway we're you know it's drawn us closer it's been humbling it's been you know just uh, creating empathy and yeah so uh, and Julia and Jacob, they're fine. You know, Julia complains in the morning, but she enjoys it. So. <laughs> but you can tell. So, you know, it, it, Jacob really needs, like, he really wants to have human interaction with friends outside of school. So it's really been tough. How about you guys? How about Petra and Petra wakes up every morning and says, Susan used to be Petra's teacher, <laughs> but she wakes up every morning and, um, and it's like, I hate school. And you're, you could see, I mean, Petra pretty much likes school. Like she's good at school. She's social and she generally likes school, but she wakes up every day. And it's like, I don't know how much of it, like I, I definitely take it with a big grain of salt. I don't know how much of it is just sort of like her mantra these days. Um, but she's like, I hate school and I hate COVID. And yeah. but she's really doing fine. You know, um, we've had a lot of, we've been really focusing on like getting outside and going skiing and going ice skating and going sledding and just trying to like do whatever we are allowed to do <laughs> to yeah. the, you know, to the furthest extent. So my kids are okay. But then my older son, he's 13. And I think, and he's going to be in high school next year, Susan. <laughs> yeah high school <laughs> and he's like almost as tall as me he comes up to like here on me oh, a picture of him recently you know I was really surprised yeah oh my gosh but he's in that same sort of boat with Taylor maybe it's just like you know their social lives are so important to them at that stage and um he misses people and dances and things yeah. we have right. a um one of our kids moved back home our my our 24 year old um she needed to for she really did, actually didn't have a job or a place to live <laughs> so and it's been really nice like at 24 
she's appreciate she's like oh you guys are giving me food thank you like she's just appreciating <laughs> you so you'll get there eventually but it it's a little gift to have time with her right now at this time in her life and so far she's not depressed but she's looking for something interesting so if you hear of anything <laughs> um she's in uh her field is environmental biology and earth scientists earth sciences so she's uh she'd like to be working outdoors it's a hard time I heard a rumor that Earthwalk might resume next semester. She could consider reaching out to them. I, it's a good tip. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we our words were. I actually found this activity kind of challenging, right? About safety. Like yeah, me too. Like I thought of all the words, safety is a hard one to think about. What my values are for safety. I just think I went back to our our stakeholder feedback survey and sort of the themes that came from that and and the things that we kept hearing over and over again in there, which was about safety. It was rooted in safety. What are your visions and concerns of safety? And I wrote down equity, like seems to be this huge theme. I wrote that one too. <laughs> and then I wrote social emotional well being of kids. So sometimes it was around like, you know, safety concerns around like bullying and peer pressure and things that were happening in their peer groups. Um, and then sometimes it was about stuff that was happening at home, like safety from home, but like just sort of, um, you know, so their social emotional safety. And then I went from there to creating a safe space in the school for them to really focus on learning. Um, and then I wrote student centered. So what is best for kids in terms of safety? Nice. I added um, communication. I felt like communication was a thread throughout. Um, and systemic organization. <laughs> when what I meant was like something for our whole district in terms of safety, a system that worked for all the different moving pieces in our district. And then I also had a sort of compassion, empathy, along with the equity. So I had fairness, which I think goes along with equity. I also wrote compassion, empathy, <laughs> and nonviolence. And that was that's that's a good, good interesting word choice. I didn't I didn't think of it, but I I like hearing it. Or nonviolent. I don't know. I also had the word protection, and I I feel like that popped up because like I'm really I didn't think this way until last week's events and living in a capital city and thinking about staying safe next week. Protection, like I'm valuing protection, right? Mm -hmm. And so. That's not one that came exactly off of our our survey, but like that goes with safety, I think, protection. Definitely. I think sort of related to a lot of these words, it's um, there's been a growing sort of um, sentiment of just the value of community input stakeholders like I've been really appreciative of this process and how inclusive we've been of a variety of stakeholder groups and it's been really important to me that the police were represented and that the administrators were represented and that everyone had you know their time um, to talk to the committee and that's been feeling really important to me um, because I do think we're a close-knit town and you know it's a small town and people know each other and i think we all tend to generally come from a place of like respect for each other um and i appreciate that in in this process and in developing and thinking about safety yeah along those lines like when we say equity like i sometimes do wonder like where are there voices that we're not hearing you know, like hearing what you're saying, this stakeholder input. I think we've done a, 
as comprehensive as, as we could, but then a little part of me is like, oh, did we miss some voices? Are we not hearing from some of our community? Um, but I, I always think that, but I think that's the equity lens that we put on as we think mm -hmm. about that. You know, I just realized, like, I revealed information about my daughter to Orca Media. Like, do they? I know. I thought that too. No, I just like. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just. Oh, well. I, I wonder if Orca actually records the breakout rooms, but I guess we'll find out. <laughs> we all did. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, I'm okay with it. I guess. Now I'm like thinking back. What did I say about Soren and his social? <laughs> We just won't tell them we said anything. Yet. <laughs> yeah, they don't watch it. <laughs> um, so are we supposed to be boiling this down to sort of like, or synthesizing it all? What, I forget what our, we were I supposed think to come we were. I think we are supposed to winnow it down to like one big idea. About, so like if we had to define safety, I guess, like. Or core values. Small group activity to identify core values. All right, Susan, put that in all into a sentence, okay? <laughs> it's not, writing is not my strongest suit. <laughs> Catherine, you then. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, I don't I want to get back to that word protection because I think that can be protection from protecting our children or and our staff you know, social and emotionally, and also protecting them physically. So, I don't know. Um, of course, equity and fair, you know, that was a one we all touched on. And, mm, so maybe creating or I don't know. Hmm. So we're we gonna do this in one like phrase, or can we just do yeah. word? I think you can do whatever whatever you want, <laughs> whatever feels comfortable and makes sense. I think I, I do think that the uh, the part you said, Emma, about community input or like collaborate, like we're not just looking at one perspective, right? Like we're really for safety, we have to we have to think about safety for everyone, <laughs> and so that's where the equity comes in. That's where the protecting everyone comes in. If protecting one group, you might be feeling like you're not protecting another group. So, I guess community building community building is really kind of what we're saying, isn't it? Like, I like that. Community building with a focus on compassion, empathy, equity. Yeah. And social emotional well being. Uh, building a vision of safety or protection as a community together. Oh, that sounds great. You got you got there. <laughs> But I'm still relying on one of you to what, okay, repeat that again. Building a um, community, building a community safety plan of protection. I didn't say it that way, but whatever. No, you said it better than that. Well, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, forty-four. Together. To, I mean, I know I use the word together. Um. So I think that's like my main thing that I really appreciate about this town is sort of like our our togetherness. Mm -hmm. Catherine, do you want to share, or or do you want to share, Emma? I I I heard to pass the buck from Emma. <laughs> Catherine is. I'm seeing Catherine write something down. So building a safe space together as a community focused on compassion, empathy, and equity. I didn't put protection in there. Oh, right. The protection word. That's, okay. That's okay. I think safe space implies. Protection. 
Okay, so do we have everybody back, Emma? I think we do. I think so, yep. Great. All the breakout rooms are closed. Great, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to hear from each breakout room and Keisha is going to record all of your ideas um, and on a Jamboard and which we're gonna share in a minute. And then we'll just see if there's some uh, alignment and we can kind of try to see if we can narrow this down to a manageable number of, of key values. So Keisha, do you want me to share the screen or would you like to share the screen? So share the Jamboard as we go. Yeah. Um, why don't you share the screen since you'll be doing that? Mostly. Okay. So I think we'll start, I'm going to start with the group. I was in an amazing group with Zach and Eliana. And Zach, if you want to um, just give a quick overview of what we talked about, and then Eliana's going to tell you the words we came up with. And then I think Keisha's going to add those to the Jamboard, which I think she probably already started with her group's work. So go ahead, Zach. All right, um, we talked a little bit about um, just kind of how we're feeling and how everything's going. Um, and then um, a little bit about um, how we want to keep these uh, like words or like phrases in mind going forward and using them as a guide for future and current reference um, and just kind of highlighting um, the goal of our conversations like within that group and as a bigger group as a committee. Thanks, Zach. And Eliana, if you could share the words we came up with. All right, we got some good ones. Uh, equity, acceptance, um, physical safety. Um, I can, oh, I'll just start over. Um, equity, acceptance, physical safety, gen gentleness and compassion as one, um, and voice. What was the last one? Voice? Uh, student. Uh, yeah, student voice, got it. Great. I'm also, um, when I hear one twice, I'm going to make it a little bigger so that we can see what got a lot of play here. So. Great. Thank you. And so let's go to another group. Um, the group I was in was with Keisha, so ours are up on the board already. So maybe we, we could go. Um, we also did a little go around check in just how each of us are doing and feeling in this moment, um, before, uh, sharing with each other, the ones that, um, rose to the top for, for us. Uh, so diversity, equity, and inclusion came through from all, all three of us had, a, um, some version of that, um, justice, um, empathy, uh, taking a nuanced approach to be able to um, take holistic next steps and um, seeing the humanity and fullness of each student. Um, those two combined are um, one of the, we realized that that's um, sort of the picture of how any one individual is moving through the system of uh, of our district right now. That or just when they show when they show up at school, um, and that the one of the big challenges we as a committee have and the district has is to be 
setting a core set of standards um, system-wide and then um, and then making sure that each individual is um, with everything that is going on with them can uh, can show up and uh, and and meet those standards and and have um, uh, and have the most access to, to learning uh, possible. Uh, so that's why we that's what the sticky for system wide standards and individual nuanced approaches. Um, uh, where that comes through. We also named that relationship building is um, a, an important value and um, addressing unique traumas and lived experiences. Uh, and the last one I think was having, in, uh, having optimism and a belief in others. Great, thank you. And Emma, I think you were in a, a group that wasn't, hasn't reported yet. Does someone from your group want to share? Yeah, I think Catherine was taking notes. Yeah, so we had a similar experience, checked in with each other and then um, talked about our words that we came up with. And we, we kind of put it into a definition. Um, so you can take the words out of it if you want to break that out, but building a safe space of protection together as a community with the focus on compassion, empathy, equity, and social emotional well-being. And that was fast. <laughs> I can read it again. Keisha's pretty fast. Okay. <laughs> I could, yeah, good. I'll just put this over here, Keisha, for you. Some other words that we came up with were um, nonviolence, um, communication, systemic organization, That is just kind of like what the last group said, you know, having a, um, you know, kind of standards of going forward for the whole system to follow or be um, a guide in pr providing safety. Please. Great. Another, another word was um, student centered, which I don't know if I see on the board. Uh -huh. I'll write that, Sue. I realized you were doing some magical theming and I was like moving <laughs> back around. Okay. We're, you know, this is good. So um, we, uh, let's see, were there, was there- yeah, There's one more group, Sue, okay. I think maybe. Great. We, there was mine. Do you all, are you okay with me speaking on behalf of the group? Yeah, okay. Um, I was with Joan and Caitlin and Edie and some of the words that we came up with um, were- um, oh, really cool. Cool. Um, an environment that's transparent, open, caring. Sorry, I can't hear. There's some, uh, okay. Can you start again? Because we just yeah. had some background noise. Thank sure. you. Um, we just said relationships, relationship building. It's really important. Um, an environment that is transparent, open, caring, and inclusive. Um, we talked about um, this we also mentioned student-centered um, and we talked about this word holistic in terms of like students' physical health, also their mental health and well-being, and also just what students bring into school with them from their world outside of school. Um, just kind of honoring all of them, all of who they are. Um, those were, our, I think, our main words. acceptance, restorative, yeah. Great. Could I add a word that I'm not, that's not on the board um, that I had mentioned was just the word transparency. Maybe it goes in some ways along with communication. I, was there one around communication? Anyway. I put transpar transparency ended up with all the other 
ones in that string. Oh, okay. I could just- Oh yeah, oh, I see it. Yep, yeah, okay. And then I think Caitlin just suggested anti-racist as a word, as a theme, as a value. Great. Is that, I think that's all the groups, right? So we started, uh, Keisha and I just started kind of moving some of these around a little bit, but if people see um, any themes that they want to name, because of course, when you come up with something like this, you, you want to try to narrow it down to a manageable number because you wanna actually, like as a committee, be able to just remember what your core values are what these core values are so that when you're making decisions and coming up with strategies, you have an easy way to go back and make sure that they are, that they are addressing what you have said matters most. So theming this a little bit can be helpful and you all can do this after the meeting too, but if anybody sees anything that they'd like to suggest right now in terms of things that, that you think should go together, we can move things around a little bit. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing the screen and, and Keisha, maybe you could share the, uh, a link to the Jamboard in the chat so people can see that. So that was great work. And um, as Zach and Eliana and I were talking about uh, the, the having a list of values, what we would suggest is that you narrow these down to a manageable number of ideas, and then you create a statement for each value so that when you look at the word, if the word is student-centered, that you all have a shared idea of what that means. Okay. And so that's some work that the committee or a subcommittee could do between now and when you're meeting with your board. So with that, we're going to take a little break for about 10 minutes uh, and then we'll get back to the next part. Before we break, does anybody have a reflection about the work that we just did together? Or a question? I just think, it's, oh. No, go ahead, Eliana. I just think it's going to be like extremely helpful for the board to see these values as like, they haven't had the context that we've had with all the research and stuff. And like, it's just like giving to, to them pretty straight, like, you should help hold yourselves accountable to this moving forward. And like, it just resets our understanding as well. So I really appreciate it. That's great. Okay, so um, we offer we're some? running a little bit ahead and we could give people 15 minutes if we wanted to and still be on time. Would people prefer a 15 minute break? Or five minutes more time at the end? Yes, or possibly I'd go with that. early. I like that. Okay. Ending early would be, <laughs> if, if possible. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. We'll see you back here at 640. Thanks, everyone. Get started again. So for the next 45 minutes or so, we are going to uh, position the group to be able to make um, your very best recommendations to the board. And what we're going to try to do first is to just get your, your thinking flowing um, by talking a little bit about some of the articles that we had sent earlier in the process that I think Emma had shared and whatever other research you all have been doing. So we're going to do that. Eliana is going to lead an activity to do that work. Then we're going to review some of the themes from the stakeholder feedback. And then we're gonna break into groups and look at the results of the survey that Emma just shared. And we'll give you some more instructions about what we're asking the groups to do then. So for the first part of this, I'm gonna turn it over to Eliana and we're gonna um, have an opportunity to look at, talk a little bit about some of the research that you all have done individually. Eliana, did you want me to share a slide for this or do you just wanna talk through it? I can just talk. Um, so basically, um, some articles have been sent throughout the past few months, and we're hoping that you took some time to, to look them over. And so we're going to break out into small groups and just share 
what stood out for everyone and some key takeaways on whether that influenced like how you feel about this position and if there was any other research you found you could bring that up too and then um after you do that just have a few people from your group to the larger group so that's pretty much Eliana, did you want to um, do the breakout rooms or do you want me to do those for you? It looks like I'm not able to make that right now. Emma, if you wouldn't mind doing those breakout rooms, that would be great. And um, and I think maybe we should maybe have them be, you know, like six, six or seven minutes. And same three to four people or, or less or more? Yep. I think mixing it up, two to three people mixed up for about five or six minutes would be great. All right, here we go. Oh, let me just make sure. I always forget that I'm not sure if Orca should be considered a person because they're not participating. So I don't want them alone. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. Hello. I was scarfing down dinner. <laughs> I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Oh, oh now I can. I can now. Oh, it just took a second to catch up. Okay. So I think the two articles there, I should have asked this before we went into breakouts, are um, the one about SRO data and the Essex <clears throat> Westford statement mm -hmm. update on the SRO. Just because that's what I just yeah. heard them reference like these are two articles that Sue and Keisha had shared with us at the, at early on and those are the two that they shared with us early on. Mm -hmm. So um, the first one was from the Brookings Institute or Brookings something. Does policing make middle schools safer? And then the other was from Essex Westford, what they're doing, they're sort of how they're moving forward from having an SRO, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to name what stood out to us, I think. Yeah. So I have some notes I can just like, read over them. Mm -hmm. So the first article, um, some things I wrote down were um, little is really known about the safety outcomes. Um, mm -hmm. Seems like data is definitely a theme, like lack of data. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the question, uh, is it a money issue? You know, um, or is it, are we really making these decisions? you know, like we're doing right now, which is trying to get to the bottom of whether it's good, you know, what's the best thing versus, right. oh, we don't have the money, but we do have the money. Let's make the decision based on that. Right. Um, uh, it also said that student experiences at school was a better predictor of feelings of safety so I think it really does depend on, it talked about the school community and the school climate. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I think that really does, um, it's, it's different for every school. So yeah, that's something that's really stuck, stuck out to me with throughout this whole process is what is our school climate? You know, mm -hmm. is that something that, I mean, especially with, we have a lot of new administrators. So I think this is the time to, mm -hmm to set that, mm -hmm. you know, I think the principals have a big, big role influence on yeah. that. So, yeah, 
I remember that fact really sticking out to me as well. The, the correlation between success in academics, actually it felt like this article anyway was positing that that means more safety. Whereas I had been approaching it from the other perspective of like, we should have a safe culture and climate at schools so that academics, but they go, it seems like yeah. at the very least they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely stood out to me too. Um, I, I just noted that uh, they talked about school violence, fighting, arguing, bullying, religious teasing, uh, people not being listened to, things not being addressed, disrespectful behavior. Um, the question of is an increase in an investment in the SRO a deterrent to violence? Um, Have there been, you know, there's just questions about have there, has there been reductions in violence due to the SRO or not? Without the SRO, it's not really clear. Um, yeah, it seemed like, um, well, the, the sort of audience or whatever for this for this Brookings article was more a little bit at the state legislative level, but it oh, seems a, kind of I know I know Sorry, seems that's appropriate. That's okay. Um, it seems like it can be transferable to where we're at because it it seemed like the article was saying like listen when when a crisis or an act of devastating violence happens at a school the the rush to react mm -hmm. in a way yeah. that's like that to yeah. to um to increase safety is is um not working like the and and putting more money toward police is not working seemed like the general theme or whatever of this article and and <clears throat> um and it 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 emphasized for me the value of this more holistic view of safety um, so that it's not just about kids showing up and being able to access learning because they feel safe, but that their, their academic achievements are all. Too short. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. A little bit. <laughs> you're trying it's always a balance right of trying to honor people's desire not to be on the call all night and then also trying to give you enough time to have real conversation so eliana i think she's eliana's going to lead a brief um opportunity to hear from a few people so i'll turn it over to you eliana Oh yeah, so I guess I'll just call on people. I don't know who is in what, actually no. Uh, how about, okay, so how about Joan? You can speak for our group. And then next, I know that Mia wasn't in my group, so you can go after that. Um, sure, yeah, so we, we mostly focused on just the one article that was most recently sent about um, do, does police make uh, middle school safer and um, I think our um, shared takeaway was you know the article really putting forward that um, in that particular state um, data not just not supporting um, um, not showing clear evidence that certain metrics were being met in terms of like reduction and disciplinary action or you know gun safety um, and um, just this opening up. Wait, Joan, you're muted. Was I just talking oh. and I was totally muted? Were you all just trying for, to tell me I was no, muted and I was looking over there? We just heard for a sec. Until the very just end. Oh. Am I supposed to finish? I don't know. The host muted me, it said. I think I was being cut off. Yeah, that was my fault. Sorry about that. But we didn't miss anything that you said, so you can continue. Okay. Um, I think the last thing I was saying was just um, the, uh, 
that the article really um, seemed to be encouraging, right? Like a, opening up to other possibilities of um, how an SRO position could um, be constructed and, and questioning whether um, it needs to be quite as comprehensive as they've been set up, you know, having quite as many responsibilities. Um, hopefully that covered it for my group. Yeah, it's a pretty good um, transition because um, it was Catherine and me and Orca Media, so really Catherine and me um, in our group. <laughs> and um, we focused mostly on that same article um, with the time that we had. And just to piggyback off of what Joan said, because um, what pretty much what Joan uh, summarized for her group also stood out to us is the, that there's um, more uh, safety is a more comprehensive or needs to be a more com comprehensive um, we thought out than just through this lens of having a police officer at school. And in particular, one sort of data point that stood out to Catherine and, and me when we were reading this article was that um, academic achievement is a um, uh, a better tell of whether or not a school is safe than um, than lots of other things. I'm you know I'm not going to summarize that exactly right, but it was that stood out to me because I had been um, approaching this as we need schools to be safe so that we can have academic achievement, and so seeing that academic achievement leads to safety was a big. Um, it just really struck me, um, and it and it makes me feel like well certainly. The, the two at the very least go hand in hand. Um, if not, then uh, what does that say to us for where we should be allocating our resources? Because when we think about if we're dedicating um, some set of resources to safety and we know that academic achievement is a good indicator of safety, then um, it feels like that's a really good um, learning to draw from that. Uh, Amanda, what's your did you just say my name, Eliana? Oh yeah, I was wondering if your group wanted to okay. go. You're you're a little fuzzy, which is why I wasn't sure if I heard you. Say oh, my, my hair is on my mic. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, Susan, you want to help me out? But I, I Mia, it, what you said was exactly like a main point that Susan and I talked about from that article, just about achievement being a real indicator for helping decrease um, disciplinary action and behavior and increasing safety. Um, I also, we were also just talking about how there's in the things that we've read, it, there hasn't been any, I haven't read anywhere that has, has shown data to say that an SRO has improved school safety. And in fact, everything we've read, I feel like has, has just done the opposite, has shown that just having an SRO has not proven has not shown to improve school safety. So I just thought that was an interesting theme. Um, did we talk about anything else, Susan? Yeah, I, I was just really smitten with the um, Essex Westford model that they were trying this year with the community liaison officer. And um, I, I really would love like some updates on how that's going, but I found in addition to the Brookings Institute article, I found that really intriguing to look at uh, thinking about safety in a in a different way and also giving that person in that role a real charge. This is what we'd like you to do. So that's pretty much what Amanda and I talked about. Great. Uh, Edie, would your group like to go? Sure. Um, I think Will would probably do a better job summarizing than I would, so I'll hand it over to you. I doubt that I would, but I will anyway. <laughs> um, we talked about, um, well, it was, it was EDI and Caitlin, ED Caitlin and myself, um, and since Caitlin's a member of the community um, and didn't get the, the homework, at first we summarized um, the initial articles that we got and then um, talked about how later resources that came up um, reinforced um, much the same thing that we saw initially 
Um, and in addition to what, uh, what, what other people have already talked about in other groups, um, we talked about the, the noticing that there's a great deal of data about in this study and in other studies that we've seen since and other resources, there's a lot of empirical data of harm. Um, and then a lot of anecdotes of benefits. Um, and, and in that initial homework that was represented by the, the news story, the TV news story that we saw um, of the sort of student petition to not dismiss their local SRO. Um, so then I, I think that was Massachusetts. Um, and that's sort of what we've seen all along. We've seen data of harm caused and anecdotes of benefits and a lot of, um, a lot of frustration this, um, from a lot of different directions on the lack of data. Um, whether it's I mean, our former police chief um, talked at length about um, frustrations and the, an inability to provide um, data on, on how the position works. Um, and I, during the expert thing, I spoke to the executive director of the ACLU in Vermont, who talked a lot about the same thing um, and said he was unaware of any national study um, on the topic at all. Um, that demonstrated um, benefit of the position. Um, so that's what we talked about. We talked about seeing that same empirical versus anecdotal um, pattern throughout most of the resources, all of the resources. I think there's one more group, uh, Jay and Zach maybe. It was, yeah. It was Julie and I. Julie, I don't, I don't know that we have too much else to add to what's been said. I don't know if you want to uh, chime in. That if you do, that's great. If not, I think everything we covered has been said. And then Zach was uh, talking with me and Keisha. So, uh, Zach, do you want to share some of your thoughts? Sure. Um. I think we mostly talked about, um, I, I believe it's Essex, but I'm not 100% sure, the school that um, in Vermont that removed the position, um, like removed the, the officer from physically being in the building, um, but they still kind of do their job and how that has the possibility of um functioning in montpelier as kind of like a reduction of harm because harm caused is often or per, harm or perceived harm um whether that be like just anxiety around having a firearm in the school building um is reduced um by them not being there but still being available um as a resource um and that kind how that kind of could work for um, most people uh, despite like differences in beliefs and have that still work for everyone and especially the groups that are affected by um, violent policing. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. And Ileana, thank you so much for facilitating that part of our discussion. Is there anything you'd like to say before we move on to the next part? Okay, thank you. So now we're going to do one more kind of context setting thing before we do some more work. So this is all leading up to the recommendations. And what I wanted to do was you all did a fantastic job gathering a lot of stakeholder feedback that was specifically related to uh, the SRO position. And Will and Mia, and I believe Catherine also helped theme some of that information just to make it manageable. And what I'd like to do is invite them to briefly, if it's possible, just share a few highlights from those themes. And um, so, I can also, I made some slides that just basically took the themes document and cut it up into different groups. So I can just share that. It's too many words to read, but it might be a good uh, visual reminder for the subgroup as they're thinking about what key points they want to make. Would, you, would that be helpful if I do that and share a visual or would you rather just talk to the 
to people. I'd rather just talk. Okay, go ahead. So um, I'll just turn it over to Will, Mia, and Catherine to do a quick overview. And if you could just mention each of the groups and just a couple of words about some key points, that would be great. Um, I can go ahead and get started. So just again, we're on the, the document that is the themes from MRPS stakeholder feedback and we're skipping over vision for safety and concerns about safety because um, uh, Sue covered that earlier in today's meeting and we're on to themes related to the SRO position. Um, and at staff, I'll just start with staff, the first one here, um, seemed like a big thing that rose out of these themes was the was two things that stand out to me. One is relationships, and um, the and skills, skills in and um, uh, whether that's conflict resolution or de-escalation or assessing a situation for what the what's you know most needed. Um, th that those kinds of skills um, and relationships seemed like big things coming out of staff. Um, Will, do you wanna take other schools and then Catherine community members? Do, do, do. I'm sorry, can I go next? My notes, I'm tracking down my notes. Sure. Catherine, do you wanna to go to share any themes from other schools? Um, sure. Um, I didn't know I was going to have to present on this, so. <laughs> uh, um, me, me neither. Oh, we're just doing this on the fly. I can, you I can do it. Catherine. I can do it. I'm finding yeah, things. I, I, um, me, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I didn't want to just talk and share your work. So that I was offering that, but definitely didn't want to put anybody on the spot. <laughs> All right. So, Will, do you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I so, now have the document in front of me, but which, which one am I doing again? Other if, schools. Other schools. other schools. Just a few words about each of the remaining stakeholder groups. That would be awesome. Okay. Um, in, in other schools, the relationship building was really just covers a lot of territory in terms of how everybody described the work, no matter who was doing the work. The, the importance of communication and collaboration and relationship building with the families. Um, and that went, that went in a couple of different directions um, in, in depending on who, who it is building that relationship and where that responsibility is understood to reside. Um, but that was, um, that was my biggest takeaway, really. Um, teamwork, communication, all of that fits in. Restorative justice was often mentioned as an ideal with varying results in the actual ex execution. Um, and the other big theme um, was just the word alternatives, that um, there, were, there, there are many different alternative models, including at least one district mentioned um, the, their plan to hire an additional SRO. So there are, there, are, there are many ways that this can go. And um, while, while theming that this, that came up as a big takeaway, that just uh, having, having the imagination, which is really difficult in a crisis, like neurologically, it's really difficult in a crisis, but to, to, to recognize that there are many models of doing this work um, and that the one that we have is not inevitable. Um, whether or not it's desirable is, is a larger question, but it isn't. We are not beholden to the way that we're doing this because lots of people are doing it lots of different ways. So relationship building and alternatives. I could have just started with that. That would have been short. Yep. Okay, done. All right. So community members, um, I would say like one of the main themes is maybe just not really knowing what the school safety plans are, that not being clear or communicated well. So um, that's a need. Um, but definitely there were emotional reactions and triggers from seeing police on campus and different, you know, just seeing them there um, and also um, having their child interact with um, the SRO for a disciplinary procedure. Um, so reactions mainly from the parents 
or um, talked about in negative reactions. Um, so I think there's just concern about, you know, equity issues, racism, um, making sure that um, people are feeling comfortable with the safety plan that the schools have in place and not knowing really what those are. So, and how the SRO plays into that. Great. Um, I'll just round it out with experts. I don't think there's too much to add here it, um, on top of the other schools. Um, it feels like those kind of went hand in hand that there are alternatives to an SRO position um, and that the it, it in the places where they're using alternatives, the it's the network within the school that is holding much of the um, much of the safety responsibilities. Okay, thanks everybody. So now we're going to now that you have all this context, we're going to do kind of the heavy lifting of the night in the next period of time. And I'm going to share the screen so I can just so we can be all kind of clear on. Uh, what we're asking you to do and then um, how we're going to do it. So hold on a second here. Um, okay. So we're going to divide into three groups and each group is going to uh, create some statements uh, based on one of these three things. And we're not going to ask you to be in a group of the idea that you support, right? So this isn't about your personal opinions. It's really more about, well, of course, you're going to bring your personal perspective in, but it's really about given all the feedback that we've heard and our best thinking, if the school district were to decide to keep the SRO position, what would some of the benefits be based on all that you've heard and that you understand? The second group is going to look at the question, based on the feedback we've heard, how would we describe the benefits of eliminating the position? And then the third group is going to offer any other considerations that they think the board should keep in mind. And so to help us do this work, Emma um, put out a survey before the meeting so that you're not starting from scratch. So I'm going to share that in a minute. And so, I just want to let you know this is for clarity so people can write this down, but group one is going to be looking at column B of the survey. Group two is going to be looking at column C and group three is going to be looking at column D. I'm also going to share another document that's a table so that once your group is doing its work, you can put the statements in the table. So your job is to look through the comments in the column that your group is working with and to see if you can synthesize those or if there's any key themes that stand out. And then the group is also free to add anything else that's kind of missing that you think is important. Are the instructions clear? Okay, so Emma, I'm gonna ask you to um, create three groups and um, we let's start with 15 minutes. If people need more time, I think you'll be able to um, text Emma as the host and just let her know. And so I'm hoping 15 minutes will be enough, but I think we, we may need 20 minutes. Actually, let's do 20 minutes because this is really important. We don't want to cut this short. Let me put some uh, links in the chat. Okay, so this first link is the survey that you all just filled out earlier today. Whoops, I didn't send that to the right group. I'm gonna wait for people to be able to access the links before I move everyone because I don't think you have access to the to this chat when you go into the breakout rooms. Okay, let me get so, the yeah, other click link. on the links now. Um, while those links are being shared, could, sorry, to just clarify again that product that our group is trying to do the outcome of our group in the next 20 minutes to share in the large group when we return again is 
to come up with a, your best thinking, your recommendations to the board. If okay. the board were to keep the SRO position, what would the benefits be? That's group one. If the board were to eliminate Nate, what are the okay. benefits of that? So but are we trying to, because we've done that like as a committee in terms of our search. So are we trying to synthesize? Yes. Okay. Yes. You're trying to synthesize your best thinking into a series of statements that you can share with the board. Okay. Any number of statements doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, I would try to make it manageable. Okay. We talked about removing duplicates and then also you may find that there's some things that you want to add. Sure. Great. Okay. You, you know, and so, some people didn't have enough time to. Uh, fill out the survey ahead of time. So um, there might be people that want to add. Okay. So do, have you put everything that you want to put into the chat? Yes. Now? So there's the link to the survey that you'll review as a group. And then there's a link to the table to record the feedback for your group. So each group uh, will be um, it's labeled on the table which box you'll be putting your feedback into. Okay, so whoever is interested, you should probably go to the chat and open up those documents. I'm guessing most of you have them open now because I'm as soon as I open the breakout rooms, you will lose access to the chat and those links. Right, there's we, no editing access to the spreadsheet. Those are just the survey results, but there is editing access to the other document, the table okay. so that you can fill that out. Okay. Will we know which group we're in when we show up in our breakout group? Emma, can you say uh, one person from each group so they'll know? I've titled them to breakout group number one, breakout group number two, breakout group number three to match your, Great. so it should be self-explanatory. I'm just, it's always a little tricky to make sure that we have enough committee members in each room. Sorry, and Keisha's not back quite yet. Keisha's back and she and I don't, we probably shouldn't be in the room so we can just stay in the main room. But we can also leave, you don't have to deal with that. Don't worry about it. We okay. you can leave us right. anywhere. A little bit. We won't. We'll exactly. Okay. Okay, here we go. You ready? <laughs> Hey. Um, I it would be helpful. I can send since we're group two. I copy and pasted the um things we're supposed to. I can be helpful. Can send that to this chat. Oh, thank you, Zach. Yeah. I think or it's or it's this whole thing, but yeah. <laughs> Great. So we are, based on the feedback we heard, how would we describe the benefits of eliminating the position? And so we're, get, we're looking at the survey that we got today or yesterday or whatever. Yeah, I think that's a good place to start. Column C. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Did, it, did you guys, I, I did get a chance to scan through this today. Did either of you get a chance to look through it? I haven't read the survey <laughs> answers. There's like a lot there. <laughs> so we have a big task ahead of us. Um, I think there's only two really big answers. Okay, go for it. Um, would you like me to read them or should we individually read them? Well, Zach, I'm curious what you mean by two really big answers. That might be a good starting point. Um, on the like uh, the synthesis of SRO insights, um, in terms of like like there's only two super long like oh things I see that be difficult to read. Um, if if I could just have like two minutes just to read just column C that I think I'd be able to contribute to the conversation. Yeah. So, thank you.
I got to my answer, so I can skip over those. For some reason, I can't read the whole last box. Is there a trick, you guys? Oh, yeah, that's. Um, the only trick is not a very good one. If you go up into the area of the spreadsheet where you would be entering it, you can okay. kind of scroll in there. Yeah, yeah, that is good actually. At least we, I can see the positive yeah. for <laughs> like, I was like more creative thinking. Got it. So we're basically putting the same information on a different table. We're synthesizing it down a little. Sorry, maybe you're not yes. done. That's okay. I, yeah, I, I think we're summarizing. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And it's because, for example, as I read through this, I see a lot of um, this is puts us in compliance or not full compliance, of course, but this follows the ethos and spirit of our um, equity, diversity, and inclusion policy is one that has been repeated over and over. So it feels like that's <laughs> one that we would say I really goes into the table. I feel like there's one entry in particular that's really quite helpful and it's it happens to be the one that's duplicated. Um, the one that starts with BIPOC, LGBTQ+. I feel like those three points are really the ones that keep getting reiterated. Um, how do you guys feel about that one? Mm. Yeah, I see that one a lot um, within these. I just feel like the three points made there do a nice job of synthesizing the other statements. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great place to start. And then we can just go back through the other statements and see if there's anything that we that stands out that we think is missing. What do you is it possible? What possible do you possible to get that? I know I guess it's it's like a view only, right? If it's view only, hold on, I think I might have just gotten it. Whoa. Oh, where did it go? We're talking about um uh row ten, right? Yeah, it, and on mine it looks like that's actually repeated in row eleven as well, but I don't know if yours looks like that. Same um, with yeah. mine. I just feel like that those three when I read it earlier today too, I was like, oh that that person nailed like nailed the three big ideas right in one little cell. <laughs> but I, I can't really copy and paste. I I've got it, Susan. Oh good. Um just getting up into that little mini area up at the top. Oh right. That's a very good tip. Oh, yeah. All right. So I've gotten it in to the Word document, the SRO recommendations shared doc. Awesome. So the group that is in breakout group one has a lot oh, <laughs> in boy. the shared. Not that you know this is a competition or anything. Um, Julia, are you able to see the recommendations shared doc? You should be able to. It says anyone with the link can access. I think so. Is that the one that? I'm not sure. I got. I I think so. 
I it's the one. Send the link again, if that would be. Good with this stuff, Zach. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Zach. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Oh, I hadn't seen that one. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we kind of want to maybe go back and see if there's anything like in other statements that maybe we missed. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. One thing that's that's in there that I don't, I'm not sure. It's sort of in the one that the that we just copied that you just copied and pasted over, but um, the the opportunity for creativity or for like rethinking the system, people called out a few times, and I thought that was really interesting. You know, it's like a it's a good yeah it was it yeah it's um it's it is in the spreadsheet so it's in that last one i'll go ahead and grab it from there because they they articulated it really well whoever wrote that one we didn't get it into the word doc yet but it was in the spreadsheet i'm not following you but thank you for whatever you're doing <laughs> <laughs> it, what julia just mentioned is in that final cell that final oh. box oh got it got it it's the Row last 12. point that wrote, yeah, the, and the last point in there. Oh, somebody fixed that too. And the other thing I, yeah, the the other thing I don't see in that box, box or row ten box, is the is the what you called what you said, Mia, at the beginning of that, you know, sticking to the diversity, equity, and inclusion policy of this or uh, values of the school, mm -hmm. and 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 like acting on anti-racist values that we are aspiring to as a district. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I know we're not the column D group, but that did get mentioned a couple times in the column D group about like, should we even fly the Black Lives Matter flag if we're not really mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in that way? I know that's not our job today, but it was really interesting to read that. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, oh, what column? What row is that? Um, I think it's eight. Um, we don't, it's about testimony from staff at schools and bringing police officers to a home visit. Um, do you think that would be beneficial to include in our little statement thing i'm i'm just reading rereading it now zach as you mentioned it yeah it's the third point down there's a lot in there mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea zach because we kind of don't have that sentiment anywhere else so it would be good to include it i think I can grab it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, going back in to the spreadsheet, see what else I find. <laughs> The budget piece. I personally have uh, I have feelings about this one that you know that we could that, that there's a savings, some possible savings. Yeah. I personally, think that that savings need to be in reinvested in whatever, you know, whatever beginning of the creative replacement needs. But I think, you know, that's that's we're not talking about my personal opinion here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even on the committee. <laughs> be able to use an wait, equity. Wait, Julie, I think it's a good point because we, we don't have that on the, you know, on the new. Work. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's where I was going with it. <laughs> For sure. I'm trying to find where that is, what I, row. I know I couldn't find it either, Zach. It, it's way down the, I think it's cell 12 in the middle. I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. Um, there is oh. that one, one with like a $45,000, I think. Oh, okay. Let me control it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of too. 
Um, I think it's eight again. Okay. Yeah, it's like the fourth from the bottom. Oh, yeah. This person was verbose. <laughs> <laughs> Thorough. Well, I, I guess then we should talk about, are we, do we want to emphasize that there's a cost savings is a benefit to eliminating it? Or do we want to emphasize that there is an opportunity to reinvest that money? I think the reinvest person, well, I guess it's not our personal, right? We just need to. Yeah. No, she did say we are allowed to bring our personal opinions into this. I did hear Sue say that. <laughs> I think we could, I, I know that the, you know, this, this is, would be editing what somebody had written, which I also think we is okay for us to do. Cause one person wrote eliminating the position opens up the possibility for more creative thinking around safety, justice, and restorative practices that could also more deeply engage the broader community. And we could just slide in opens up the possibility for, and resources for more creative thinking around safety. Just, yeah. Yeah, that person's second bullet also talks about the funding anyway. In box yeah. 12. The very last person. Yeah, it's as if the mm -hmm. position is eliminated, funding is available for other means right. of promoting safety. Um, maybe something just if we're looking for more things, I think the very first one, um, that cites the Disability Law Project and Vermont Legal Aid. Um, what they say about SROs could be useful, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Just as like a, these organizations or these reputable places are also like, this could be better. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so it could even be, I think it came up over and over again you know, I think people, multiple people meant, mentioned both of those legal aid and disability law project. And, you know, it could be some, it, something along the lines of like coming into, into line with the recommendations of the ACLU, the disability law project, the Vermont legal aid, you know, listing the organizations that have made that recommendation. Yeah. yeah. When I think about we're going to be sharing this with the school board. I wonder how that, like, how does that be benefit? I, I, I think of, will they ask like, why is that really a benefit? Why do we want to be in line with Vermont Legal Aid, um, Disability Law Project and ACLU? How would that right. convince the board? I, I'm curious. I'm I'm just wondering that right now. I mean, I think that like with our equity statement and like general, like trying to include um, like <laughs> people of all all like minority groups. Um, I think having these like bigger organizations that. Um, say the same thing can also, I, I'm not sure exactly in the context of the school board, but I've found in other things, it can really uh, substantiate an argument to have like a big, <laughs> big organization behind you or like there to support. I hear you. So it's not like, it's not like we should follow their leaders more like they've validated this. They are, yeah. this is, this is what we have found in much of our, in, um, interviews and research and it's also validated by these reputable organizations yes it's written out in box eight um like a list of the of the organizations and it says the research and data that these organizations have provided su to support their position is compelling for the remo removal of the sro position right I mean, if, if like to take it a step further, if you wanted, to, if it would be stronger, if it was pitched to the school board to say, you know, you would be bringing the school district 
in line with these leading organizations who are, you know, like, I think there's something about like, I don't know if best practice is an appropriate term there, but that's what it sounds like to me. Well, and that we're not operating in isolation, which Mm -hmm. we have a tendency to do sometimes as a small district in Vermont. And so I Mm. think being aligned is really crucial and important. And so I like, I really like including that information. I think it'll help the board. Uh Oh, 40 seconds left. Oh, Oh, Mm -hmm. or uh, we'll have another minute. It looks like after that, but Okay, nice work though. Thanks for getting that on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's if if the board needs this. The we have received feedback from students and families from marginalized groups in box eight as well. Um, you know, the whole tell us your stories piece. Mm-hmm. Right. Can get that in there. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Hi, Thanks. Good, good work, work team. <laughs> Bye. Okay, here they come. We let them in a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> this is everybody. Okay, everybody's back. Great, great. So we were hoping to have all the groups report back, but we think that it's more important to give you all the chance to not be here longer than we said. And you can look at the other group's work. And when Emma's talking with you about next steps, we think that it would make sense for you to figure out how you want to do the work to refine that. Is everybody okay with that if we don't do report outs and we just go right to next steps? Okay, great. And then just, can I see a thumbs up if that went well? Did you all feel like you got some good work done in that? Awesome, great, okay. Thanks, Edie. All right, Emma, we're gonna turn it over to you. <sighs> okay, well, I mean, the next steps are to, you know, we have, we. I'm going to be sharing this information in sort of a general, um, give the board a general idea of what our plans are for February 3rd. And it's a very brief, you know, I, I'm getting a couple of minutes on the agenda just to say, yep, we'll be presenting to you our findings. It's probably not going to come in an up or down uh, recommendation on the SRO position itself, but it's going to be more of an overview of everything that we covered as a committee um, in the past few months. And I'll be doing that at the January 20th board meeting. And then we have one meeting on January 26th as a committee before the board meeting where the board will ultimately make a decision on the SRO position. So I feel that it would be a good use of our time in the next 10 or 15 minutes to discuss as a group, um, you know, how best to use our time at the next meeting and um, the sort of general direction that Sue and Keisha and I felt like it would probably be best to um, uh, sort of synthesize and and uh, organize our thoughts um, and provide the board with a few like 
make kind of like cover letters. So like the, the um, themes bullet point document that we saw earlier, that would be the cover letter for the visions and concerns of safety survey feedback data. And we would provide those to the board together. And then the, um, the document that we just were working on in our breakout groups, that would be sort of the overview document of, um, of um, I feel like it's two or three different <laughs> pieces of information that we're synthesizing in that document. So we would provide the board with a couple of like sort of summaries and then the raw data that we, that we um, created those summaries from. So, you know, it seems like at the next meeting, we can sort of refine our work that we just did and make sure there's no duplicates and articulate things the way that we want to articulate them and um, have, you know, hopefully have the committee members feel comfortable and confident with what we're presenting to the board and then also decide how best to present it to the board. So is it, do we want a PowerPoint presentation? Do we wanna have um, the different stakeholder groups sort of give a quick summary at the beginning and sort of what is, um, what will that look like? So I wanna open it up to you all for um, pos to create the agenda for the next meeting. And we can start brainstorming some of those things now if you want. Mia? Um, I, I got really excited about that Jamboard at the beginning of this meeting. And I feel like that um, we really just got started on that. And that that also feels like a key contextual piece for the school board. Um, so I would love to spend some time at the next meeting doing kind of what Sue recommended, which is um, finding themes from within those themes, because it started, it, I was noticing a lot of overlap in what we said, and then also giving like the kind of one sentence or two sentences about what that means to us, like what maybe like what we see, it, what, how we will know it when we see it, you know, like centering students or centering student voices, we would then add like the one or two sentences. I think that would be a really, um, not just a, I think that would be a helpful as a contextual piece for the board when sharing our sort of quote unquote findings with them. And it feels like it sets us up well for our work beyond that. I like it, Mia. It should yeah. also be possible to synthesize some of the other stuff that we did tonight. Cause a lot of the same, a lot of things we put on stickies early on came up later while summarizing or, or, um, or theming. I'm not used to using theme as a verb, but um, it's, there, were, there were a lot of shared themes in the different breakout groups. So some of what Mia just described could synthesize a lot. I think that um, going through the matrix of like raw response from the community would be great because we can like attach those values to specific like testimony and also like actual testimony from previous board meetings, like just so the board can have like the value and like clear evidence that supports it. I think when it comes to the part about planning how we're going to present to the board, it's going to be super important to think about how we use visuals because in these Zoom meetings, we like totally have to think about engaging video, uh, visuals to help get our message across. We have a lot of words <laughs> on our documents and that's not going to translate well. So I, I don't exactly have a plan for that, but it, I would like to dedicate some time to that. Okay, this is just a really simple thing, but it might be useful, um, especially in, in Excel where you can change the color of a thing. Um, that what Eliana just described about grouping responses according to um, 
grouping them according to, to themes, concerns. Um, if those were color coded, then pulling back gives you like, look at how much purple there is. Um, if we know if we know exactly what purple represents and what blue represents, um, in term, then then it provides a visual um, that's otherwise impossible because there's a lot. Yeah, and some of the some of the stuff, some of the feedback that we received could certainly fit under a few different um, core values core value themes. <laughs> and um, so I think um, another way to do it perhaps is to plug it in kind of like what we did with the questions, the Q&A document where we took the question and then we plugged it into all of the stakeholders that we wanted to answer that question. We could do the same thing with the feedback and plugging it into all the core values that we feel like it lands under. And then if we want color, we can add that also. <laughs> I know I spoke once, but um, is it okay to speak again? <laughs> I, um, I really wonder if the board needs some kind of time to consider its values or revisit its own equity statements. If like, if when we're making our plan of presenting to the board, uh, we need to approach it from like a real, like, um, I don't know, we need, we need people to be thinking personally about their feelings and their values. And the exercise was really helpful to us. I'm not suggesting that we go through that whole exercise with the board, but we may want to consider um, um, how, how we can reach people. You know, uh, so it's not just like another business item. <laughs> so it's really has meaning for them. Um, I saw that Eliana said that she thought that was a great idea. And I also think it's a great idea because the board is a policy governance board and the decisions that we make have to be framed in our own policies or the budget. <laughs> so um, I think it's good as a reminder to start with reviewing that. How are people feeling about um, participating in some sort of presentation and what that might look like? The silence is saying everything. Um, I'm sorry, I was, oh, go ahead, Mia. I'll just say, like, I, it's not my favorite thing, public speaking, but I would be happy to, as a team effort, um, be a participant in presenting. I was taking notes, sorry about that, wandered back into an uncomfortable silence, but I'm also happy to present. Okay, and Susan put in the chat that she liked the idea about a survey about level of interest of, um, presenting. So is that something we want to try? You want me to email out? <laughs> okay. So I'll try to put something together. And um, Eliana and Edie, if you could help me by just looking at it and giving me some feedback before I send it out. I don't want to volunteer anyone, but in the spirit of being student-centered, it seems like it would be really great to have it be like students are the main act and some cameos by other main stakeholder groups represented on the committee, if they're willing. Sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. As the silence stretches on, I'd just like to say on behalf of group three, welcome to whoever used a bunch of the top of our space. 
we welcome you to our square. Our actual notes start a little bit further down. <laughs> we were wondering how you might feel about that. That was us. My group. We, um, we, we feel fine. We just want to mention in case there's any confusion that that has occurred. We, um, we, we noticed that there was a couple of things that seemed to fit better in that third category that it wasn't really didn't fit squarely in our category. So we were like, I think that might be better in the third category. <laughs> oh, Joan cannot attend the February 3rd meeting. That's really unfortunate. Sorry. Okay, well, in the spirit of um, trying to end slightly early, <laughs> um, I'm going to pass it off to Keisha to do the, your closing. And um, I will be sending circulating a survey on your level of interest in participating in a presentation, um, sort of being mindful to put the students at, at the center of that presentation to the board. Mm -hmm. And it'd be great to have as many people present at February 3rd, pencil it into your calendar. I think it would be, I, I picture you all being on hand to answer questions or provide commentary if called upon. Wait, I just oh. have a quick question about that. Mm. Um, are we still gonna provide space for like, will members of the public still have the space to like have testimony and stuff or is it just gonna be like us? Cause I feel like that's really important. Public comment is always at the beginning of every school board meeting. So it's just the way that we do it here too. Although I tend to open it back up. <laughs> here and there. Um, at the board meeting, they tend to be pretty strict about having it be at the beginning of the meeting. So if you know of people who want to come and provide public comment, then um, you can encourage them to do so. Another thing that I want you to be thinking about that that just reminded me of is, you know, we've talked a lot about, um, Sue and Keisha and I have talked about like individual committee member feedback to the board, you know, because the work that we're doing and the presentation that we'll be doing will be more like broad umbrella of, of everything that we worked on and um, not taking a position one way or the other. And I want to leave room for you all if you do have a really strong feeling and sentiment and position. I think um, it might make more sense for it to be um, in the form of public comment or email to the board members, but we can talk about that at the next board meeting. So we can discuss what that might look like. Emma, Emma. Before, yeah, I was just saying before we jump to Keisha and Sue, there are a couple of logistical questions in the chat. Um, Zach, the board meeting starts at 6.30 on the 3rd, and they're supposed to go until 8.30, but they often run longer. And I can imagine that this is a board meeting that will go beyond 8.30, <laughs> probably the one on the 3rd. And then Joan is wondering what time is this meeting on the 26th, the committee meeting on the 26th? Okay, so we had been doing, I think it was five to seven, right? Um, the, one of the reasons why we shifted to 5.30 was because some people had obligations that were ending right at five and it was hard for them to get from that obligation to this obligation. Um, but I, I think we can probably shift back to a two hour meeting instead. So 5.30 to 7.30, does that sound good to people? Or does five to seven really, you've started to get used to that format? 5.30 works for me. Okay, so we'll plan on 5.30 to 7.30. Great. Thanks, Emma. Um, I think people have given a lot today um, and we don't wanna keep you too much longer. Um, I think I can speak for Sue in just saying this is the kind of work that really gives us joy and nourishment and hope. Um, you know, it is really hard sometimes to look at the national level and some of what is out there in the great wide world. Um, and it's really important to return to where we can really make a difference and sort of create fertile ground for change. And you all are really embodying that. Um, we're so grateful to have spent this time with you. We're not going anywhere. We have a lot of work to do with the city and the school district. Um, and, and we will, you know, try to offer to Emma and the team if they'll have us, you know, a follow-up opportunity as you're finishing up to see if we can be of help in the next phase. 
Um, and we look forward to staying in touch with all of you. We thought that we would end by asking people, what is a hope that you have for the next phase of your work? And kind of in this context of, you know, the, the moment that we're in, you know, what's a hope you have for the safety of your community? So it could be something you think this group can do, or just a hope you have for, for your community and its safety. Um, and I just wanted to take the liberty to offer for people who have kids who have bedtimes or, you know, just need to go, you'll all see each other again. So, you know, feel free to jump in and share your hope and sign off if you need to and catch up with folks later, given that it's getting late. So I was, I'm looking in my screen at, at Mia and Joan and some of the folks I know are, you know, really trying to end on time um, and let you share a hope and sign off. Mia, do you want me to call on you? Can I call on you? <laughs> sure, I was, I feel like I talked a lot today, so I was trying to let others, but um, my hope is um, for an openness to possibilities we haven't imagined. Joan? Um, it's, it feels challenging to put words to what my hope is for the safety of our community in this moment. Um, um, and, but the word that comes to mind is just really peace, peacefulness. Hmm. Thanks, John. Okay, I'm gonna start making some assumptions and also people can totally feel free to go. Amanda? Yeah, um, my hope is for us to be truly restorative and really understand that and work towards that with fidelity. Thank you. Um, Edie, do you wanna put it in the chat or do you wanna say it out loud? I can say it. Um, my hope at this moment is that I can be happy and satisfied with the work we do together and that it comes to a resolution that leaves me feeling like I serve this community to the best of my ability and um, to the best of my aims. Set. Um, Catherine. One of the things that stuck out to me and some of the public comment from a student, he said that kids are growing up in a world influenced solely by disease and death. And my hope is that kids are not seeing the world that way, that we can make a positive change so that kids have joy. Thank you. Zach, still got you? Yep. Um, my hope would probably be, um, I don't, I don't know the right word exactly. Uh, I guess, I guess creating a community in which everyone feels that they're like able to, they, they have contributed, um, or they've had, um, a contribution that was meaningful to them and that we just like reach a resolution that reduces the even if it's not a across the board resolution whatever um that we just reduce harm with everything we do mm -hmm. thanks Zach. eliana um i just hope that we can really hold ourselves and our community accountable for to to hold to to making sure that those core values we recognize are like a central part of of decisions going forward. I feel like that was really important work, um, and I just like I don't know being in a community that can appear to be liberal or whatever. I it, it just I want to make sure that really holding true to that in like every part of like schooling, whatever we can. Thank you. Susan? Um, my hope is that the um, 
the work that this committee does um, ignites our community and our community becomes excited about um, moving forward with and making some deci hard decisions, um, but that it, we really can gather community support and uh, feel some sort of excitement about this decision-making process and the outcomes. Thanks. Will? Um, how to say this in a way that hasn't been said already. Uh, I, I mostly wanted to say this actually to the representatives from school admin and none of them are here, so they don't get to hear me sympathize with them and so <laughs> that's their loss. Um, I just wanted to express how extraordinarily difficult it is to take stock of the landscape around you and the context for the work that you're doing while in triage mode. Um, I mean, while in survival mode, you see the next 10 steps in front of you and that's it. And this requires more than that. Mm -hmm. And so um, my hope, so I mostly wanted to say thanks to everyone able to look at the whole landscape while in a context that makes it extremely difficult to see more than 10 or two steps ahead. Yeah. Um, especially if you happen to be in charge of running a school, you know, this year. Um, and so with that understanding and acknowledgement, what I, the hope I wanted to express was the same as Mia's, just a hope for a sense of possibility that the way things are is not the way they have to be. And that we can, we can hold ourselves accountable to our ideals, even um, if the actual execution of that is complex. Thanks, Will. We could end on almost any of these. I, I want to see if Julia wanted to, to weigh in before we let Emma have the last word. That's a hard act to follow, Will. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, and I was going to say also something along the lines of, of creative new possibilities um, that, that bring the community together. Um, I really liked, I think it was what Zach and Edie, I think both said something about contribution that really value the contribution of everybody, as well as the safety and inclusion and um, dignity and humanity of everybody in our community. Thanks, Julia. All right, Emma, you have the hardest job of all tonight. Let's take us out. <laughs> well, most of, I mean, what I, what I wrote down is almost verbatim what Edie said, and she said it better than I did. <laughs> so, but ultimately, you know, um, I want all of the members of this committee who have worked so hard to, to land in a place where you feel satisfied um, moving into the second part of our charge, that you feel confident with what we've um, provided to the board and and ready to go on to the second part of our charge. I think I see some tired, but nodding and supportive faces there. So Sue, I don't know if there's anything you wanna add. This has been really tremendous for both of us. So. I just wanna thank you all during this moment to be working with communities practicing democracy which is what you all are doing. It's fantastic. I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing. So thank you for giving us a chance to work with you all. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. Keisha. Thank you for guiding us. You've been wonderful. You have some great work product, like a huge amount. It is, it's really impressive. So just take a moment to enjoy that and feel proud of that. We hope you all have a beautiful, peaceful night. Joan, I loved that word. And, um, and we'll, I'm sure we'll be in touch and we'll keep us posted on how things go. And we look forward to hearing um, how this progresses. Good night, everyone. Take Good care. Night, everybody, take care. Thank you.